This is the Razer Naga Trinity. It's the new Naga. It's also pretty modular, pretty uh, kind of awesome. We're going to take a look at the video, so stick around. So I should point out that I'm mostly an FPS gamer. I play stuff like PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds and Rainbow Six Siege and sometimes GTA V as well. So these are the sort of games that I personally play and test on and that sort of thing. So this is kind of a slightly biased review towards those sorts of uh, game types because I'm not an MMO or MOBA player. So if you are, just bear that in mind when listening to my thoughts and opinions on the mouse. With that said though, this is a really very awesome mouse. Inside the box you get three attachable side pieces on the, that go on the left hand side of the mouse. Both, uh, All three of these have two magnets on the front and the rear which are very easy to attach and detach but will not come off while well, you know regular gaming use that kind of thing. It's, it's something that you physically have to pull off but at the same time they stay on very nicely which is awesome. The first side that comes pre-attached to the mouse is the standard Naga side with 12. Actually pretty firm but nice placed uh, and generally nice buttons on the side. You then have an FPS style mouse uh, sort of grip with a large rubber pad on the side for grip and obviously two standard sort of uh, slightly mushy and a little bit very kind of light to push in buttons uh, that are in the more FPS style. And then you have a sort of mix of the two with a circle of again slightly mushy buttons uh, that also have a rubber circle in the middle for grip and that sort of thing. Leaving those to one side for a second let's take a look at the rest of the mouse. You do have a actually pretty wide mouse here. It's definitely a right-handed only style of mouse. You have very nice feel on the left and right clicks and a very notchy scroll wheel which I actually find very pleasant to use. Although personally I still do love the uh, MX Masters infinite scroll wheel so I'm personally going to use that but it's still very nice. Also on the right hand side you do have a place for your ring finger to sit and your pinky finger does have a nice rubber grip on the side too which is very nice and makes this a very comfortable mouse and I really am very pleased with it. On the top of the mouse you have two DPI switching buttons which are also very nicely placed and actually quite easy to press as well and you obviously have the RGB sections for the scroll wheel, the Razer logo and the side uh, depending on which side you have. The sides with the uh, multiple buttons so the 8 button and the 12 button sides have LEDs built in whereas the more FPS 2 button side doesn't. On the bottom of the mouse you have three very large feet for this sort of gliding surface and this is awesome is it looks like it won't wear down very easily and even if it does you have a lot of surface to wear down there so that is nice to see sort of longevity side. You do have a profile switching button on the bottom as well and obviously the sensor itself which I think is pretty similar to something like a PM PMW 3360. It's a 16,000 DPI sensor, is incredibly accurate and is also very nice for uh, general uh, basically any gaming use uh, both for the FPS that I was testing it on and of course for the more mobile centered mouse that it's kind of designed to be. It's a pretty fantastic sensor. Then moving on to the adjustable sides, they can also be controlled by the Razer Synapse software. The mouse auto uh, sort of detects itself and tries to install the Razer Synapse 3 beta. This is uh, a little bit buggy in my experience as you can see by especially when you're trying to use the advanced chroma configurator. For a good while the mouse just didn't show up as one of the options so I can adjust anything but it does kind of work for the most part and you can use the older version of Synapse as well if you fancy but when you actually use the newer sort of uh, Razer Synapse 3 beta uh, you can uh, customize basically anything it's pretty easy to do almost anything with any of the buttons here so if you want to use you know open programs with it they've also got the new hyper shift which is basically like pressing shift key for your options so if for example you do have the 12 button side on the mouse you can have say button one as the hyper shift button which then allows you to have two sets of buttons mapped to the rest of the uh, 12 or the 11 other buttons so that you can have a total of 22 uh, options or buttons or actions available versus the standard 12 that would be here if you didn't have the hyper shift functionality. Now in my testing and experience with the mouse it was kind of interesting in that the standard MOBA side, the standard 12 button side was actually one that I ended preferring the most. I thought I'd prefer the 8 button side as this would be great for stuff like PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds where you do still kind of need some extra hotkeys and to be able to switch weapons, throw medical uh, supplies on and stuff like that, but uh, you don't necessarily need all 12, but the placement for this just didn't feel quite right on the thumb where you are end you end up resting on a lot of the buttons and these feel a little bit more mushy than the standard 12 button side, which is a bit disappointing as it, it'd be nice to see this just a little bit better. I'd also like to see this slightly further forward just from my personal hand size, but again it will depend on your uh, personal 
preference and hand size as well. The one that surprised me and actually kind of let me down the most was the FPS side with two buttons. Now this is pretty comfortable, the rubber side is very nice, but the two buttons are very, very easily pressed. There's no distinguishing feature between them and they rock about quite a lot. They're not really sort of centered very well. So I'd really, uh, it's a shame because this is a really cool idea personally. I really like the, the sort of implementation of it. The fact that these are very easily interchangeable. They immediately switch the profile on the mouse. So if you want to quickly switch to your FPS, you know, setting to play some Siege or whatever, and you only need a couple of buttons selected, then throw this on, that'd be really cool. But, you know, it's just that the implementation in the hardware side of things just isn't quite up to the sort of standard I would like it to be at. With that said though, the standard side that it comes with, with the, the sort of standard Naga set with 12 buttons is very nice. The actual buttons here are very uh, sort of tactile, very clicky, uh, and very easy to place exactly which ones are which as there's slight height differences between them. So this is a really awesome side and this is the one that I'm personally going to use when I'm using this mouse. And I think this might even replace my SteelSeries Rival 310 as my sort of main desk gaming mouse, or at least go for, you know, jump on my second desk as the sort of ultra wide gaming uh, mouse. So it's a, it's a very awesome bit of kit and I definitely recommend it. When it comes to pricing in the UK at the time of filming, the mouse is retailing for about hundred pounds. That puts it in a pretty high price premium bracket, but it does put itself up against some of the other higher price sort of premium mice like the G903 from Logitech and that sort of thing. And actually it has a pretty interesting set of features to go with it. So I'm not too worried about that sort of price points. When it comes to scoring for me, this is going to be a four for value for money. I think in terms of performance, it's actually going to be a five, but in terms of functionality, if they've done a little bit of a better job with the two sort of non-standard Naga size, it would be a five here. So that's why it's a 4.5, but in terms of scoring, it's going to be a five. In terms of styling, it's going to be a five. And in terms of Tetum UB score, I'm going to go with a 4.5 and a gold award. If they can improve the sides for sort of a Trinity V2, then I'd happily give this a top tier award as it it's a really impressive functionality aspect. The fact that it comes with the uh, sides in the box is also really nice, so you can hot swap them really easily. The software is decent, if a bit buggy, and it's a little bit annoying that you have to sign in and create an account, but otherwise, it's a really impressive mouse. It feels very well built, and I think, uh, if you pick it up, I think you're gonna be pretty happy with it. So that's my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. Is there anything that you'd like to see improved with this mouse or is this something that you'd really like to see in your own hands? Let me know in those comments down below. And otherwise, if you have any questions just specifically about the mouse, especially if you're thinking of picking one up, then feel free to also let me know in the comments down below and we'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. If you wanna check out pricing for the mouse, take a look at the Amazon link in the description down below. That will be the top thing in the description for you. So feel free to take a look at that. And if you wanna support the channel and keep me making these videos, on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis, then feel free to take a look at the Patreon link where you can support me directly or the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links where you can support me slightly less directly but still massively help me out. Otherwise, there will be some other links and videos over here for you to check out. And of course, if you're new to the channel, feel free to take a look at the subscribe button too. And otherwise, thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.